Hey guys, let's get more news from SAN Francisco 49ers, but first, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave your like. Kyle Shanahan's offense is all about torturing himself and his assistants. Under Kyle Shanahan, the San Francisco 49ers have come to define the modern era of offensive football. Since 2019, the 49ers have had a top three offense in net passing yards per attempt each year save for an injury marred 20. In both 22 and 23, the 49ers were a top 10 offense in almost every conceivable statistical category, even ones that may seem incongruent with one another such as scoring quickly on big, explosive plays and also sustaining long, punishing drives. Defensive coordinators caught underneath the 49ers' offense often flail like a swimmer in a whirlpool. Opposing teams have searched for the essence of 49ers' success, hiring Shanahan's assistants, poaching his players and stealing his plays. But, the secret ingredient remains sitting in plain sight. Ask any of Shanahan's assistants and they'll tell you. Kyle is no different than a barista using only Luwak coffee beans, or a watchmaker insistent on ivory hands. He must know everything about the ingredients before they are poured into the pot and they have to be perfect. This leads to the inevitable showdown that, when asking members of his staff about it, causes one to be met with darting eyes, or a downward gaze accompanied by a knowing chuckle. Basically, if you think stopping San Francisco's offense is difficult, Try being on Shanahan's staff and getting him to like one of your pass plays. You have to be as prepared as he is, says run game coordinator and offensive line coach, Chris Forster. Like the game is tomorrow. Like it's that play of the game. You better know exactly the shit you're talking about. You gotta watch every single snap of every single play, you have to have seen other people who have done it, you need filmed examples, every example known to man. What have you been doing for the last three days? Two days? 24 hours? Your job, hypothetically, is to have the list of third down plays ready, as you would call it if the Super Bowl was on the line. Every single week. It better be vetted. Thoroughly investigate everything. Let's pause for one moment and note that many of Shanahan's closest aides insist this is not a bad character trait. Both Anthony Lynn and Brian Greasy, Two of the more seasoned offensive coaches on Shanahan's staff, who are both his elders, say that Shanahan's methods have made them better. I don't think there's anything wrong with being demanding, Lynn says. It's hard for a guy who has been in the league for 32 years to go somewhere and feel like they're getting better, and I feel like I'm getting better. Debo Samuel of the San Francisco 49ers reveals unexpected inspiration behind football career. San Francisco 49ers star wide receiver Debo Samuel is known nearly as much for his ability running the ball as he is for his prowess catching the ball. It's one of the reasons that the All-Pro's role in San Francisco is more as an offensive weapon. In fact, Samuel is just the second player in NFL history with 4,000 receiving yards and 1,000 rushing yards in his first five NFL seasons. With his 49ers set to take on the Kansas City Chiefs in Super Bowl 57 Sunday afternoon, Sportsnot was able to catch up with the star playmaker. We asked him who his inspiration was growing up. His response will surprise the masses. So, when I was young, I played running back all of the time. So, I used to watch Reggie Bush a lot. I don't model my game after him. I just thought he was the best at the time, Samuel said. Samuel's response makes sense in that he's just about as electric with the ball in his hands as Bush was during the running back's time with the New Orleans Saints for the majority of his NFL career. Out of Samuel's 892 receiving yards this season, 527 came after the catch. That's an average of 8.8 .8 yards after the catch per reception. Absolutely insane stuff. Samuel will have to come up big if San Francisco is to avoid a minor upset in Sunday's Super Bowl against the Chiefs. His partner in crime, Brandon Ayak, has a difficult matchup against Trent McDuffie in this one. It should afford Samuel ample opportunity to do his best Reggie Bush impersonation. Cowboys could make surprise, $12.4 million move on disappointing star, PFF. This was not the season it was supposed to be for the Cowboys' Tony Pollard not with the departure of star running back Ezekiel Elliott and the handing over of the keys to the running game that came with it. 
Pollard logged 1,005 yards, which was good for 12th in the NFL and only two yards off last year's total, 1,007, but he did so on 252 carries. His average of 4.0 yards per carry was well off last year's mark, 5.2 yards per rush. That has led to speculation that Pollard's time in Dallas is running short. He is a free agent this offseason, after playing last year on a franchise tag, a one-year deal based on a formula that comes from the league, at $10.1 million. He was one of just eight running backs, per OvertHeCap.com, who made eight-figure salaries last year. The expectation is that the franchise tag was a one-year test period and because it did not go particularly well, the Cowboys will let Pollard walk this offseason. But Pro Football Focus sees a potentially different outcome for Pollard, another franchise tag. The Cowboys could ink Pollard to a second franchise tag deal, though it would be the final time they could do that before having to sign him to a contract. OvertHeCap.com projects that number to be $12.4 million, and Spotrack has it slightly less, at $11.3 million. Considering the fact that Spotrack pegs Pollard's market value at $6.5 million per year, and PFF has his projected contract, if he is not franchised, at three years and $24 million, or $8 million per year, then putting the franchise tag on him this season amounts to agreeing to overpay him by $3 million to $6 million. Here's how PFF sees the justification for tagging Pollard and keeping him in Dallas, in an article that looked at potential franchise tag candidates this offseason. For each team, the Cowboys franchised Pollard during the 2023 offseason, and his production did not match the price. Pollard appeared in all 17 games, but he saw his yards per rush drop down to 4.0. Tagging him again would be pricey for the Cowboys, but there is a chance he could be better in 2024 after being a full year removed from his leg injury during the 2022 playoffs. Pollard did admit that the leg injury bothered him in the early part of the season. I would say it's a night and day difference, Pollard said in December, per SI.com. You think you're good? You think you're all the way back until you're actually out there making plays, full speed, feeling it. Once you get a feel for it and get your feet under you, then you start to realize, oh, so I may have lost a little right there. But I'm picking it back up. But Pollard's second half season numbers in Dallas were not much different than his first half numbers, and in the playoff loss to Green Bay, he had just 56 yards on 15 carries. So, did he really pick much back up? The Cowboys have some expensive free agents and extensions to deal with this offseason, and though bringing back Pollard is not out of the question, another franchise tag would be more money than he's worth. There's value in having to only give a one-year commitment, but it's still giving away money for a team that doesn't have a lot of room to do so. If Tony Pollard becomes a free agent, the SAN Francisco 49ers are interested in his hiring. And you fan, what do you think of the Tony Pollard situation? Leave your opinion in the comments.